Hello and welcome to my patch notes rundown for the 12th of February. This week's update introduces some notable changes to rituals and usually I don't cover new content releases but I thought I'd briefly delve into the new moonstone jewelry. Without further ado, let's get right into it. A new ghost skin for the miso pet is now unlocked after defeating Raziel a thousand times. Updated the effects of the protection glyphs from the city of um ritual site. While the meta remains completely unchanged where players will fill their extra glyph spots with attraction ones, some might want to opt in one protection glyph to potentially reduce the chances of missing certain disturbances like the defiled, which is ironic because you significantly reduce the chances of defiled spawning if you make this switch. It also makes the soul storm significantly worse since the disturbance is time based and you're essentially locked in place for longer than normal. Protection glyphs remain very underwhelming. I was hoping for an alteration glyph that changes the way players engage with the content. A few ideas would be to have two disturbances spawn at the same time but at a reduced rate. Or the disturbance durations are reduced but the XP is increased. Or maybe even add another layer to the disturbances, an extra step, a mini hard mode. Uncut moonstone gems can now be obtained from ghost implings and ritual disturbances. Crafting XP from cutting an onyx has been increased from 167.5 to 180 XP. Lowered the life points and max hits of several low level monsters that were more difficult to kill than intended. Conjurer's Raising Amulet. 44 necromancy damage bonus and increased basic attack damage of conjurers by 5%. So we're just going to dive head first into the math regarding this amulet. These numbers are solely based on a standard 1 minute rotation to keep things simple. An important footnote before we move on is that the amulet becomes slightly more effective the longer the kill is, since the expected living death uptime would be a smaller percentage, meaning the overall percent damage of conjurations would be higher. So, First of all, the 5% amulet passive does not multiply the effects of the first necromancer set which at 5 pieces similarly increases the basic attack damage of conjurations by 35%. With that in mind, the amulet passive only increases the damage of conjurations by 3.7% when combined with the armor. This is also diluted even further when looking at a 1 minute rotation where most abilities aren't affected by the amulet passive, resulting in an overall 0.52% overall damage increase. When compared with the Essence of Finality, it's a 0.32% loss on top of losing out on the usually undervalued Amulet of Souls effect and potentially the damage increasing Reaper effect where applicable. If you were to use the Amulet as a switch for when using the Command Skeleton Warrior ability, it would be a 0.2% overall damage increase assuming you time your switches perfectly. In regards to the Vengeful Ghost passive heal effect, the amulet only provides an increase of 440 more life points heal per minute, which is incredibly insignificant and having the amulet of souls passive effect would be a greater defense choice in all cases, since you're expected to heal more than 440 per minute if you're soul splitting and reduce more than 440 damage if you're using an overhead protection prayer. The biggest pro of this amulet is that it's relatively cheap compared to its counterparts and it doesn't degrade or have any kind of upkeep. I wouldn't suggest using it over an amulet of souls or an essence of finality during activities where players are expected to take large amounts of damage, however it is a good entry level amulet for necromancy and a definite upgrade to most other amulets, especially when it comes to mid level content and it also might be meta for some afk content. Passing Bracelet, infinite teleports to three different locations in the city of Um. The first location is the Hanging Gardens which teleports you to the mushroom patch within the city of Um. The second location is Haunt on the Hill which teleports you right outside the dark portal which takes you straight to the necrotic rune altars. Previously, runecrafting necrotic runes would roughly take 25.8 seconds per run using the smithy teleport, but with this bracelet it takes 14.4 seconds, which is almost 80% faster. The third location is the reflection pool, which teleports you to the ghost soul fishing spot, which is also conveniently where Philippe is now standing after achieving 450 quest points, which is relevant for an anagram clue step. Ring of imbuing. Craft 10% more runes when runecrafting. 
This stacks multiplicatively with all bonuses similar to the 5% from completing Hero's Welcome, which is the only bonus this ring does not stack with. This effectively makes it a 9.5% overall increase in runes crafted on top of all available bonuses. And yes, this ring does work with soul runes as well as necrotic runes. Alteration Necklace. Increase the effect of Alteration Glyphs by 20% during necromancy rituals. This can be up to a 15% increase in souls obtained through communion rituals depending purely on how many multiply Alteration Glyphs are used and what tier they are. You could get extra material from Ensoul Rituals if you delay making the armor and weapons, but I don't think it would make a big difference either way. Lastly, the big one, when it comes to the attraction glyphs, I currently don't have enough data to provide a reliable or accurate reading on the change in Ritual XP rates. So I'm just going to leave this one blank, but theoretically this should be a significant boost. And that's it for this week's patch notes. I hope to see more expansions to rituals, potentially coupled with a new site, as I think it's a very fun skilling method. I'm also looking forward to any new discoveries with the new jewelry. Anyways, that's it from me. Thank you for watching and take care.